Hello and welcome to Charging by the Slice, a new Nokia series in which we look at the wonderful world of telephone. I'm Aaron Heller, a longtime journalist turned tech writer, and I hope you'll join me on this journey of discovery as we look into the various elements of charging and monetization. In our first episode, we looked at an overview of 5G monetization, and this time we're going to dig a little deeper into things, in particular, the Internet of Things. By 2025, there are expected to be 25 billion devices that are connected. So how do you make money out of this? To try and find out, we're joined by our resident expert, Jonathan Goldsmith, who has strategy for Nokia Digital Business. John, thank you for joining us. Aaron, thanks for having me. All right, let's talk about Internet of Things. What exactly is it? Why is it so important? Sure, so the Internet of Things represents what we've come with the Internet itself. Once upon a time, it was us, Internet Explorer, searching for things, engaging in e-commerce, and other very specific and limited applications. But today, we have supercomputers on our wrist. We have smart cities developing, smart ports in certain cities in Europe, for instance. We have smart air conditioning. The Internet has changed. And while people have been talking about the Internet of Things for the past few years, 2020 was the first year which the amount of data computed by these things is actually more than that computed by people. And it's only accelerating further uh, for the years ahead. So in this show, we've discussed 5G monetization. How is it any different for specifically IoT monetization? They're entirely interwoven. Um, IoT is a critical fabric of the 5G economy. And when you think about how you make money from IoT, you know, if you're a service provider, it's not about charging for minutes and charging for SMSs and charging for data things. Your monetization schemes are much more expansive. So many more applications, and it's a lot more complex than things used to be. And if you're investing lots and lots of money, which several service providers have, and they've also had the patience to wait for the market to adopt, which is finally turning the dial, you got to make some ROI. you got to make some money. And this is where monetization systems are critical for you to start winning this part of the market. Oh, well, let's talk about that, about how it's actually gets done. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing it's more complicated than just asking for an IOU on the IOT. How does it actually happen? How do you monetize this? Yeah, so right now we're living in a world where it's still 4G dominant, at least in uh, developed countries. And a lot of the IOT solutions needed for monetization, they're more lightweight in batch processing and a little bit different than you might expect of what's to come. And as we start shifting toward the 5G economy and it begins to mature, we're going to see a huge paradigm shift. We're talking about charging by network slice. We're talking about dynamic pricing, more sophisticated charging systems. It will be flipped on its head. And this is why we've invested so much in ensuring that we can be there for our technology partners. All right, so how do you see this evolving for service providers? Where does the future hold for them? With the majority of money being made in IoT by service providers is naturally in connectivity. It's well over 90% of this money being made. But you have some innovators out there that are going beyond just connectivity. Not just in an IoT sense, but their whole market offering. IoT is no exception. Having platforms to offer orchestration tools, maybe it's fleet management or drone management uh, and logistics you know, for certain enterprises, maybe it's on the application side, whether it's your dash cam or it's your security solution that you could buy from your service provider. The IoT opportunities are so vast. You have to pick what makes sense for your strategy and where you want to play in IoT, and make sure to stay agile enough so that you can respond quickly as the market continues to change. So how in particular do service providers seize on this opportunity, and how can a company like Nokia help them get there? Everyone knows in the year 2021, you can't build everything yourself. You need to have an ecosystem approach where you can rely on technology partners that you trust and that have this level of agility. So we see a lot of partnerships and cooperation happening between our customers with Nokia, and even for ourselves, our ecosystems of, uh, uh, of partners that can help us deliver the kind of solutions that we know our customers deserve. So if I understand it correctly, basically it seems like that currently service providers are only seizing on just a tiny sliver of the monetization opportunities that are out there. And they're not uh, unique in this respect. So many uh, 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 technology companies and other players within IoT are at a fraction you know, of what they'll be able to seize in the future. But we're beginning. The hockey stick really is being formed. The data shows it. The dollars show it. And I'm very excited to see how this unfolds in the years ahead. Well, sounds exciting stuff, and we'll be interested to see how that evolves. Um, but for now, that does it for our episode two of Charging by the Slice. We hope you enjoyed it and learned as much as we did here. Um, thanks to our executive producer, Ilana Krem. We hope you'll join us next time. Until then, 
Farewell, and we hope you'll see you again here on Charging by the Slice. Thank you.